Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll understand what is tick time scale in Verilog. This is very much important for your simulations. We'll understand what is its syntax and how can we use this. You might have seen in every code of Verilog, the first line starts with tick time scale, which is a compiler directive. Now, why is this important and what all thing uh, is important to learn under this, we'll go through this. Okay, so here is this uh, code that I was talking about that every for every uh, Verilog code starts with this tick time scale. Okay, let's understand its uh, syntax and its importance. Let's get on to this timing timing diagram. So this is the syntax for your tick time scale. Tick time scale uh, is the preprocessor directive, and then here you need to mention what is time unit and time precision. Now what is time unit and time precision? Let's understand it with this diagram. Now in this diagram, you could see that this is, let this uh, be a signal that you have generated. Okay, you you have to generate a square wave and you have generated a square wave. Let's understand what is time unit and time precision. Now the on and off duration of your generated signal is nothing but that is on duration uh, or off duration is your time unit. Okay, and time precision is nothing but how much uh, divisions of time can you have within that time period. So the by default setting, if you uh, uh, you might have seen that this is time scale one nanoseconds by one picoseconds. This is the default setting you will find in any code. Now, what does exactly this represent is uh, that let's th let this be your signal generated signal. It is starting from zero and so at, as the time unit suggests, this is going to be your one nanosecond signal. Okay, one nanosecond, one nanosecond. And the time duration uh, that, the, uh, uh, that the division of this time is going to be one picoseconds. Now, if uh, we see it like this, one nanosecond is nothing but thousand picoseconds. Okay, so you will have thousand in between values which you can take on uh, with your time. Okay, so this is what this time scale represents. Let's write a short code and understand what this time scale uh, has the impact on your generated clock. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, generate a clock uh, within an initial uh, initial window. So let's write it like this. initial begin and uh, we know that this is uh, the directive to generate delay okay this is the directive to generate delay so I have uh, this signal as clock and I'm going to set this as one let's uh, declare that variable as well this is a register and it is being initialized with value zero okay with value zero and here I can write on something like this 0 0.01 uh, and here our clock is going to go to 0 now this is another delay this is 1.2 clock 1 okay and let's end our initial big initial code here now if you see if you see here I've generated a clock and if I had to redraw draw the signal for this now signal is going to look like this uh, that it will it will remain a zero for one nanoseconds then it will go high for 1.01 nanoseconds it will go again low and it will remain low until 1.2 nanoseconds okay so this is how this is how your signal gets generated and here your duration has changed now your duration uh, is dependent on what unit delay you have mentioned here okay and uh, let's take an example if uh, my time scale would have been different okay if my time scale would have been different so if my time scale would have been something like this uh, let's say uh, time scale time scale tick time scale to be 
वन नैनो सेकेंड बाय फाइव हंड्रेड पिको सेकेंड्स नाउ इफ आई टू रीड रॉ द सिग्नल नाउ विद दिस विद दिस कोड इट विल अगेन टेक वन नैनो सेकेंड्स टू uh it will remain because here it is zero and it is going to remain zero until one unit delay so one unit delay is our 1 nanosecond so it will remain uh 1 nano say <coughs> zero for 1 nanosecond then it will go high and now it will uh now it will remain high until until how long only 1 nanoseconds right do i have mentioned it to be 0.01 but my precision my precision says it is it it, it is in multiples of 500 picoseconds so this duration has to be in multiples of 500 picoseconds then only our signal is going to get extended otherwise it it is going to get uh, down and uh, at at uh, unit delay itself that is at 1 nanoseconds so if i to again uh, redraw it like this now in here as well if i uh, if my precision is 500 nano 500 picoseconds that means and here i have mentioned it to be 200 picoseconds which is less than my precision that means i'll also i'll always get uh, uh, this uh, uh, time unit as 1 nanoseconds here we have got here we have got uh, 1.2 nanoseconds but here we are getting 1 nanoseconds and it is because of because of this factor okay it is because of this factor so this is why this is why your time precision is very much important let us now also understand what is time resolution now this time resolution uh, is used by uh, the the software itself to represent time and uh, within this resolution that means your displayed time is in 1 picosecond resolution okay so if i happen to display let's for example say 1 nanoseconds it is going to display you it is going to display you 1000 as in value as in value right so if i mention that as hash 1 which which is equals to 1 nanosecond but while showing it is going to show us 1000 Uh, as in value uh, that is in 1000 picoseconds right so this is what uh, is the time resolution and this is only used for the display so we have to know, not, not to worry about our generations this is only for a display okay let's jump on to code and let's understand how is it to working in code so my time precision is set to be 1 nanoseconds by 1 picoseconds okay and uh, this is what i uh, i am interested in okay uh, this is my module which i have declared and i i don't have any input outputs uh, for this model this is just an initial begin uh, here are some displays uh, for the uh, for the user okay to uh, represent what ex exactly this represents okay so we are going to understand uh, that my unit delay is now uh, is now that is uh, this much 1.411 okay and after this delay i am going to get a display okay so we are will understand what uh, timing uh, timing does it show to us if there is a change in time scale okay for now our time scale is uh, this okay and we'll change for the for our uh, next iteration and we'll understand what does it shows okay so let's compile this and let's see what it shows okay so our time scale is nothing but this that is 1 nanosecond by 1 picosecond let's run this code now here our timing is shown in in number of picoseconds so here it shows uh, 1400 and uh, 11 picoseconds that's what uh, our representation was and uh, was because of our uh, time scale now on in the code we are going to change this and let's see what does it shows us okay so let's make this as 1 nanosecond now what i'm interested in is because my precision my precision is set to be 1 nanosecond i will not be able to uh, represent this value within my code okay within my code it will not show my this uh, this value okay that's what i'm interested in now let's compile this again and let's see what that is what does it shows
so we have seen that our time uh, timing is shown to be as 1000 that means 1000 picosecond uh, that means 1 nanosecond as per our time unit uh, unit delay right so this was though i have mentioned it to be 1.411 but i have got 1000 itself because my uh, duration is in this uh, multiples of this okay multiples of this so my precision has to be in multiples of multiples of 1 nan 1 nanoseconds we have seen how can we use this tick time scale to generate our signals with different time uh, time time stamp right so if you change your precision your output signal is going to change if you want to download this code there is a link in the description box do check that out if you like this video Please do subscribe to my channel and write in the comment box what did you learn with this video. I will be very excited, very happy to answer all of your comments. Uh, so see you in the next video. Bye-bye.